So escrow is, is uh, it's a financial arrangement where you have a third party coming in that actually controls the disbursements of capital for two separate parties that are involved in a transaction. So in the world of EB-5, what happens is EB-5 investors send their money into what's called an escrow account. So this escrow account is an account whereby the signatories are what's called an escrow agent. So we as a bank not only hold the escrow account, but we act as the escrow agent where we're governing and essentially controlling the funds so that we're protecting the investor funds to ensure they're not dispersed into the project too early. You know, there are certain, trigger, certain triggers per the escrow agreement that need to be met before funds can be released from escrow. We, as the third party escrow agent, ensure that every dollar that goes in and out of the escrow account follow the rules and the guidance of the escrow agreement itself. So we not only hold those escrow funds, but we act as that escrow agent. And as a publicly traded institution, you know, we have fiduciary responsibility to not only our clients, to not only the investors, but to the general public to ensure that we're meeting the requirements as set forth in the agreement itself. So these funds are held in an entirely liquid deposit account. Uh, we refer to it as a demand deposit account, which ultimately means that at the time that funds need to be moved, we are immediately moving them. So the funds are completely liquid. From a protective measure, not only are we a third party where it's our responsibility to keep an eye on these funds, but we actually have this ICS product on our EB-5 escrow accounts. So ultimately what that means is that the EB-5 investors funds are protected not only from us keeping an eye on it, but from this FDIC coverage perspective up to $100 million, right? So all of the funds that sit in EB-5 escrow, assuming it stays under $100 million, which for the most part it does, um, they're fully governed or fully uh, insured by FDIC. So what we do is to this example, if there's $4 million in an escrow account, you have investor A who's moving their 800,000 out of escrow into the account of the limited partnership, will manually move their 800,000 out of ICS back into escrow and then into the LP account. And this is all a process that happens same business day. So once all the triggers, the milestones have been met to allow for disbursement out of escrow, Right, so we have all the evidence of, as mentioned earlier, the regional center, the project, the investor's I-526E petition has been filed with USCIS. Once all those triggers have been met, we then transfer funds out of the escrow account into the account of the limited partnership. The funds will sit in the account of the limited partnership until it's time to be dispersed into what's referred to as the job creating entity, which is the project itself.